Well, hello there, person. Let's check out what's new, what's fun, making the game Wraithbinder. Hey, check this out. So there's a, a bunch of new items, and um, I've been working on this procedurally generated world, and uh, so I don't know where we're gonna start here, but I know that there's always some items over this away in each one of these worlds, but they're random. Here's one. Okay, cool. So this is the uh, this is an orb. And when you pick up an orb, you immediately gain 50 experience points. Boom! Instant level up if you're on level one. That's sweet. So um, there's a few other more items. Let's see what we can find. Oh, there's one. Cool. This is the cactus. And um, this goes back to Songbringer, where you would eat a cactus, you trip out, you'd gain a bunch of health, and you'd also be able to see secret paths and walls and secret, all sorts of secrets. So you eat this, and you gain a little bit of hit points. I just gained five hit points because I was almost at max already. Uh, but you would gain up to 50 hit points from eating a cactus. And I plan on having some kind of cool trippy effect going on on the screen, and then you'll be able to see secret paths. Um, and that's another thing I'm going to be adding to these procedural worlds too, is secret paths. So that's not something that's not in there yet, but I can imagine you would like step like, ooh, maybe right here, and boom, the secret paths opens up. Or maybe there's one of those secret paths like in Songbringer where you would just walk out into nothing and you would just be able to walk there. Uh, there's one more item. Let's see if we can find it. There's another cactus. Another cactus? Whoa. Whoa, what's up with the random numbers, huh? Why are they giving me the same thing everywhere? Oh, I think I just picked one up there. Uh, yep, I did. It was the Matter Points one. So you can... There it is. Here's another one. So if I use up a bunch of my matter points, let's, let's levitate. Levitate for a while. Oh, we're gonna fall out! But we gained back some matter points of picking that up. I think I just picked it up while I was in the middle of the air. It's maybe not something that should happen. I'll take notes on that afterwards, hopefully, if I remember. Alright, so, three new items there. That's pretty fun, right? So you, you can just be like, uh, this, these are on the edges of these procedural worlds. We're currently kind of like, I just went around the edge there and picked a couple, a couple items, but um, yeah, so those are cool. So let's check out too, um, there is now the charge attack. This is pretty sweet. The charge attack is now a separate button. So before it used to be that you would swing your blade, you use the, I'm, re, I'm using the F key on my keyboard to swing the blade right now. And uh, before you would hold the F key to charge up attack. Um, but now it's separate. It's a separate button, which makes it far more deliberate. So you would get a lot of these accidental uh, charged attacks when you when um, when it was the same button. Especially if you sped up time, right? If I just go to like 4.2x speed time, that means gives me very very little time to be able to um, to press and hold the button and, and or to press and release the button for a regular attack. So, um, so you can imagine too, if you're feeling slow that day, or maybe you're just a, a slower player in general, you would get a lot of the, these accidental charge attacks the other way. And now this new way is just super deliberate because you've only got this, why is the world already eroding? Oh my gosh, run away! So that's really fun too. Also the animation is, um, is, uh, is really cool. It's been totally upgraded and revamped. You can see this, check out these awesome animations going off. I need a few more matter points. Let's do that again. Bam! You see that? Those blue and red things that go off in a circle and... Yeah, just a big old creeps. Love those guys. Okay, um... So, we're not gonna go into too much more. Oh, other than the fact that, check this out, there's a new, um, walking animation while you are having your charged ability going off. So, see we've charged up, and now he's got this sort of little shuffle dance walk he does when he walks around. Before... He would drag his feet, and nothing would move. his feet wouldn't even move while you're while you're moving around and all charged up. But now he does the shuffle dance. And also with the shield. So when you're walking around with the shield, you've got that sort of walking animation going on. Which uh, is just, just a nice thing. It's a nice little thing to see that and have that animation um, just feel more congruous. So uh, let's go to the training world. This is the uh, Last thing to show you here, today's video. Um, the training world has been revamped. This is now the third iteration of the training world. The first iteration was really boring, 
and it was just a bunch of stations. I was just trying to get things out and like what, what types of things are you going to want to learn in the training world. Uh, the second iteration was a lot more fun because it, this is, this is just basically a continuation of the second one here. Uh, it, it allows you to pick up the sword really fast and, and get into battle way faster and it's just a lot more fun that way. So this is, uh, what we're seeing here is um, some slight improvements to the training world where um, it, it basically shows on the screen what you're supposed to do and it hangs there for a while. All these little steps have been optimized a little bit and, and um, they just kind of work better. Um, and look a little bit better too. There's jars here and there. But now you can pick up the, the map. And when you get the map, you can also rotate the screen. Um, but this is the main part of what's new here is that you get to the end of this sequence here. This used to be the end right here at this point. This is sort of like the finish of the training world. But now it's only halfway through. So what you learn here is that you learn to use the bow. So you activate this little switch here and you get to this point where you gain this bow ability and then you learn that you can shoot your bow. Oh, this is how you use the bow. You just you know press the S key to shoot it. But also it has this little tip right here where you hold S to lock the bow on a target. So you get up to this point and you can lock onto this little target switch thing here. Let go, shoot an arrow, and you get another bridge that opens up here. So it's teaching you to use the bow. Um, you start off learning the blade, and then you get the shield, and then you get the bow, and then here, this is the last part of this whole revamp training thing, where you are going to get a wraith, so you're going to be able to beat this bot here, and then this bot is now on your team, and uh, I haven't programmed this yet, but the goal is to have this bot follow you around and come up to fight two more bots at the top, so it'll be a two-on-two -two battle that closes off this training world. So you've learned to use the blade, the shield, the bow, and then you also learn what a wraith is and how to fight other people in sort of a team environment. So this guy's not gonna follow me just yet, uh, but we'll just go up to the top and beat this last bot anyways. Um, but you can imagine what this would be like where you have a wraith following you and um, you fight against two other players and that will be the conclusion of this training world. So that is, um, that's what's new with the training world. And let's go and look at one last thing. That is these optimized blender animations. So Wraith Blender uses a procedurally generated approach to animations. And uh, they're all, these are all these animations uh, I've created here in Blender. And basically you can see that each piece of these animate, these, this, this character is, uh, is all is all parceled out in different you know sections right where you could swap these in, in and out with the game and the game engine itself swaps these in and out so maybe the character doesn't have a cloak maybe the character's male maybe the character's female maybe a big old hair maybe a, a, a mohawk maybe you don't even have any hair uh, but also all that kind of gets procedurally combined and generated at runtime um, so the optimization here is this there were a lot of animations which were um, which didn't need to be so detailed. For example, this one right here, the player shield animation, this has, currently has 15 different frames, right? Um, this is zero through 15, it's actually 16 frames. Um, before it was like 30 frames long, but you really don't need 30 frames for something that's only like 0.1 to 0.2 seconds long in the game. You're never gonna notice that as a player. So I went through, I went through a lot of these animations, just made sure they're all optimal. They have just the right amount of frames. And that took the, overall, that took every one of the characters' animations. There used to be something like 630 different models that had to be generated and loaded. Um, so, so generated the first time you run the game, and then it caches them. So the second time you run the game, it just has to, still has to load 630 different models per character. So that was like times eight different characters, and it could be a really slow thing, right? Uh, let's, for example, let's go back to um, the battle world, and we'll we'll load the game. And you'll see that it loads a lot. It loads twice as fast now, something like 180 percent faster. But see how that this bar comes across the bottom of the screen? And at first, there's the black curtains, 
where it's loading all of the core animations that it needs before it ever starts. And then right now it's still lazy loading, the bar is still going to the bottom of the screen, where it's lazy loading all the rest of the animations that we don't really need right away. Uh, so that whole process used to take about twice as long as it did right there. So we just loaded eight character models completely in the time it took to just talk about that. That loading bar is now totally complete. We're ready to roll. So super cool to have all those animations way more optimized, way more efficient. And still we've got really, really good looking animations. Everything is just just looking awesome. There's really the only thing that's that's uh, that's more tight and more has less frames are just animations that didn't need as many frames anyways. So big win there for players to load faster, uh, for me as a developer to develop this game faster too. So yay. Um, and uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, person. We'll catch you next time.